guys, it's Danielle with Danielle Gets It Done, and this is my successful VBAC birth story. Gonna love you, honey, on and on and on. I'm a morning dove singing out a song. I'm so excited to be sharing this with you. My first birth was a traumatic experience for me, which ended in a C section, and I really really wanted a VBAC for this second birth. And I wanna say you can have amazing cesareans. I've had friends who've had amazing experiences and you can have really hard vaginal birth. So it's not like VBAC is for everyone or it doesn't mean that it's gonna be amazing, but it was for me. And my goal was VBAC and to hopefully not need an epidural and I just got everything I wanted and more, and I could not be more thrilled and wanted to share it with you. So Norma Ione, who is sleeping right now, maybe she'll make an appearance later, was born on Wednesday at 1 a.m., so basically Tuesday night. And I woke up on Monday morning in a terrible, foul mood. I'd been having prodomal labor for weeks and it mainly happened at night and I wasn't sleeping and I was just drained <laughs> emotionally and physically. I thought I was in labor for real probably four or five times. It's just a big mind game and I was getting tired of it. And my first labor, I also planned to do it natural. And it, I ended up with a C-section, so that obviously didn't happen, but it was a long labor. And it was painful, but it wasn't the pain that was the hardest part, it was how tired I was because of how long it was. And with this prodomal labor I was experiencing, I kept telling myself, like, you're gonna go into labor and you're gonna go in it exhausted, and this is, it's happening again. Like, just terrible terrible attitude and it scared me because I didn't want to be tired for labor. I wanted to have a really positive experience and my attitude was not helping at all. And I don't know, something shifted at work. I talked to my friend Erin Williams, who lots of you know, and I just like reframed it. I don't really know why that happened, but I said, you know what? My first labor sucked, and I didn't have any prodomal labor. So let's look at this as a good thing. Like this is what my body needs, and this is what my baby needs. And let's be grateful for each contraction, each wave that I get. And someone on here, her name's also Danielle, has told me a few times that she had a VBAC after two cesareans, which is amazing. And she had prodomal labor with her VBAC baby and she swears that was one of the things that helped her to be successful. So I just totally changed my mind and said, I am going to be grateful for each of these waves. I did hypno babies, so I will call contractions waves sometimes. And just thank every one of them for getting my body ready and for doing what it needs to do for me and baby. And I also said, you know what, I surrender. It could be another two weeks. I was due on Wednesday, so it's two days before my due date. I said, it can be two more weeks of this, and that's okay. And I just like gave it up. And I think that just, I felt something shift in my body when that happened. And even though I said I surrender, it could be two more weeks, I also knew deep down like that by the act of me surrendering that it was gonna happen really soon. And I just got a ton done at work that day and just tied up all these loose ends and then I called the hair salon because I needed to cover up my gray and I thought that'd be really good to do before this baby comes. And they couldn't get me in, my lady was full, Hannah, but they called me right back and said, we talked to Hannah, she's gonna get you in. She knew I was due soon so she snuck me in I'm like this is awesome like maybe maybe it's gonna happen tonight so I left work a little bit early and I got my hair done and I got home and I watched some Bravo some Real Housewives of maybe Atlanta and I was waiting for Philip and James to get home 
and I got a really strong wave. And you know, I've been having contractions and waves for weeks, but this was 10 times stronger and it was just different. And I was like, oh, interesting. And 10 minutes later, another one came. That one I timed and it was again, really strong, but 30 to 45 seconds. And they kept coming maybe like 10, eight, 10 minutes apart. And I told Philip, my husband, you know, I could be wrong. I've been wrong five times <laughs> so far, but I think this is different. It feels much different. I don't think, like I can't say this baby's coming tonight, but I think we're starting something and maybe it would just be easier if we took James to your mom's house sooner than later so we don't have to do it in the middle of the night. So I was really, really emotional about that. I could cry now thinking about it. And I just said goodbye to James. Contractions or waves are seven minutes apart, pretty short, but intense. So I think James is going to Nana's and I'm really emotional. You excited to be a brother? Yeah. You excited to be a brother? Yeah. I love you. I love you too. I ate a big, not a big dinner, but I ate a dinner because I knew I needed to keep my energy up and I went straight to bed because that was a mistake I made with my first labor. I was too excited to sleep. And I honestly didn't think I was gonna sleep again because you're excited. But I forced myself to lay down. I put my hypno babies on and I had super strong waves. And man, that hypno babies helped me so much. I am positive that if I had not done hypno babies, I would have been screaming bloody murder through these waves. They were strong, but I just stayed calm and breathed through them silently at that point. And I was able to be so relaxed that I took little cat naps between the contractions. And I think they actually probably slowed down because I, I think I just fell asleep. And I woke up the next morning and I would guess I got like four to five hours of sleep, which I was thrilled about. Like obviously that's not a normal eight hours, seven hours, but I was thrilled that I had slept because I knew that there was a lot of work to do. So they had slowed down a little bit in the morning and I had my weekly prenatal appointment scheduled for one o'clock that afternoon. So I called the practice and said, you know, I'm pretty sure I'm in early labor. I gave them the info. Do you want me to still come in or do you want me to just kind of wait it out and we'll see you at the hospital? And uh, my doctor said, you know, if, if things radically change and you need to go to the hospital, go to the hospital. But if not, let's still keep your appointment and we can you know, see where you are. So the day before I had won a Barnes and Noble gift card, like really randomly. And so I thought like, let's go to Barnes and Noble, fill my husband's seat home from work. We'll get a coffee. There's a Starbucks in there. We'll walk around and let's buy the baby a birthday book, <laughs> you know, a book for his or her birthday. We didn't know the gender. So we did that, I had a decaf latte and we got like some Oreo cake for breakfast, which was amazing. And I just walked around and looked at books and browsed the children section, try to get my oxytocin up. And the waves were getting way strong again. And I'm like, yes, they're picking up. I was kind of effortlessly breathing through them because of my hypno babies, but I definitely had to stop and sit or kind of lean on a bookshelf or fill up if he was with me. And they were like seven to eight minutes apart, but definitely picking up. So we got the sweet baby a book and we checked out and by then it was kind of lunchtime-ish. So we decided like, let's go out to lunch. So we stopped at one of Phil's favorite places and I got a pretty good big meal in, bean burger and some french fries and a soda water and they were definitely continuing to pick up. And that's kind of the first time Phil kind of could see like how close together they were. And I think that's kind of the first time he was like, oh, like she really is in labor or early labor. So we had a nice lunch. I, we got home and by the time we got home, we had a half hour before we needed to leave for my 
prenatal appointment. And we decided let's just pack the car for the hospital. I didn't really think I was close to needing to go to the hospital, but the hospital is 45 minutes away and my prenatal appointment was kind of halfway between my house and the hospital. So it didn't really make sense not to pack. Like I was definitely in labor. You might as well get the car ready just in case it really speeds up. So we did that and we left. I was nervous for the car ride, but it just went really well. I did my hypno baby's bubble of peace and it was fine. With James, the car ride was horrible during labor. And man, the, I mean, I'll probably make a whole separate video about hypno babies, but it really, really helped. So we got there and I just kept saying, please at least be three centimeters dilated, like please. And I was a two and he kind of let it slip like I was almost a two, like probably more one and a half. <laughs> But I was 75 to 80% effaced, super soft, and the baby's head was like extremely low. And he said like the baby's head being low and your effacement to him was much more important than how dilated I was. And the baby was in an awesome position, obviously head down, super low, facing my back right up the middle. I had done a ton of spinning babies work and I'm like it paid off <laughs> she she well she's a she but I didn't know it at the time like it's in a good position so I was happy about that and he said you know we'll probably be seeing you at the hospital and hanging out tonight or maybe early tomorrow I would say for sure this baby's coming within 24 hours walk around a lot eat some protein make sure you eat because you're not going to want to eat a ton when you're in active labor he suggested doing two laps around the Mall of America. It's extremely winter and icy out right now, so it wasn't, I wasn't able to walk outside. So we thought, okay, like let's go to the mall on our way home. So we got to the Mall of America and each lap is a mile and a half long. And we just kind of started walking and browsing and kind of immediately they started picking up in intensity and not so much closer together i don't think more like intensity like stronger and i was still using my hypno babies really well phil did not notice or understand like how intense it was i was doing a good job just kind of staying in my head and internalizing it but we would kind of stop and look through stores and at that point i really prefer to be sitting through contractions which is another thing I'm super grateful for. With James, the whole time I needed to stand and I feel like that really depleted a lot of my energy. So I was happy about that. So we would kind of walk, find a bench, sit, go through a wave, get up, and we would just kind of keep doing that. And we stopped to get a protein shake and just, it was fun. It, I was in, I wouldn't say pain, I definitely felt pain, not at this point. I was in labor at the mall and it was intense, but it was fun. We were doing our thing and and we were at the beginning of our baby's birthday. Halfway through the lap, so I had three quarters of a mile to go before we got back to our car, I panicked a little bit internally. Phil didn't know, but it, it was getting intense. And I kind of felt trapped, like I have to walk so far to get back to the car. So I just started kind of walking a lot faster between the contractions. And we found Nordstrom, which is where we parked, and I'm like, hallelujah. And we get to the entrance, and we're like, that looks like your grandpa, my husband's grandpa. And we're like, that is your grandpa. So we ran into Phil's grandpa. I'm having crazy contractions. Phil does not understand how intense they are at this point. We're like, where is grandma? And you know, she's, she's around somewhere. And Philip goes to me, okay, Danielle, you sit here with my grandpa. I'm gonna go find my grandma. And I just looked at him <laughs> like, I'm not gonna sit and have these strong contractions with your grandpa alone. Like he doesn't understand what's going on. Like, no, we need to go. <laughs> Like, what are you thinking? Luckily, his grandma appeared right away. 
So we just told them like we're in labor. <laughs> it's going to be probably today or tomorrow and we got to go. So they wished us well. We gave them a big hug and off to the car. And on the way home, I started moaning through the contractions like I couldn't help but to make noise and that actually felt really good and it felt better to let out some energy <laughs> that way. And because I was just in a car, it was easy to time them and they were a minute long, intense and every four to five minutes apart and they just kept kept at that pattern. And the plan was to go to the hospital when they were four or five minutes apart, lasting a minute for an hour. So I said, like we're in the zone, if this keeps up for an hour, we're probably close to having to go to the hospital. So we got home and they kept coming and we hit that hour mark quite quickly because it probably took us a half hour to get home. And I said, like, we need to go. <laughs> I was birthing on the birth ball. We had the essential oils going and they were intense. I said, look, we need to go. And Philip was a little cautious. I'm glad he was. With James, I went in way too early and regretted that. So he was a little cautious and I said, fine, like I'll give it another half hour. So we did and they kept getting more intense and I said like, we need to go right now. I got really serious and he said, okay. So we had already had the car packed so it really only took us a couple minutes to get our stuff together and we got into the car and again, I was really nervous. It's a 45 minute drive without traffic and we left at 5 p.m. So it was just like the worst time to leave, but I needed to leave. I wasn't willing to wait until rush hour died down. I just needed to get there. It, but again, it was so great. The car ride, they were strong. I was moaning loudly through each contraction, but I was calm. I still wouldn't call it pain at that point. Just a lot of pressure from my hypno babies training, but I stayed calm. I had my headphones on and it took about an hour to get to the hospital, which is not bad for considering the time at which we left. And Phil, you know, used his apps on his phone to find a way where we would kind of get there quickly and not deal with a lot of traffic. And we got there and I got into the lobby and I was having really strong waves, like crazy lady in labor. And I remember a woman came up to me and she was just like beaming and said, good luck, like you got this. And it, it meant a lot. And I felt so good to be in the final destination and just really excited that this was happening. So I think I'm gonna cut it out there and I will share part two soon, which covers all the active labor and the transition, which was, that's a story, and the pushing and the birth of our sweet baby Norma. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and whatever your plans are, I hope you get them done. Bye guys. Ooh.